wake up early in the morning on a cold day like today, and you step outside of your house and take a deep breath, you can feel cold air breeze through your nose and fill your lungs. You can literally smell winter. Sensations like smell, taste, sound, touch. These things, we all know that it's there, but it's something we can't see. And it's something we cannot share with any other people. Because these senses can be affected or modified by each individual. It can be modified through so many things like our emotions, expectations, environment, or our previous experience. So even if I taste or I eat the exact same food as you, the taste you may sense and the taste I sense may be completely different. Some may feel, some may find this extremely spicy and don't want to eat. And some may be able to eat this in a breeze. Even with the exact same stimulation, our interpretation and our reaction is very different. The reason why I'm telling this to you today is because I deal with one of these sensations every day, that is pain. Fortunately, I'm not the one who's experiencing pain, but I'm a dentist. And by saying that, I don't mean I'm hurting my patient, drilling and pulling their teeth, okay? I specialize in a field called orofacial pain. And I know not many of you have heard this specialty before because there aren't many of us here in Japan. But simply put, I'm a pain specialist that happens in somewhere around here, like your teeth, gum, mouth, jaw, tongue. Now, I'd like to ask one question, or maybe two. Who in here, please raise your hand, please raise your hand if you like visiting your dentist. And with some laughter and just maybe one. <laughs> All right, so who in here likes experiencing pain of any kind? See, that's why I'm not the most popular guy on earth. But did you know that this sensation of pain is something that we hate to have, but it's something we must have in order to live a normal life? A person without pain. It may sound like a superhero, but that's not true. Because pain is what tells us if we're body is in danger or it's safe. And also pain is what teaches us how much our body can tolerate so it won't break in pieces. Let's say you drink a cup of coffee. If you don't have pain, you can't tell if the coffee is too hot for you or not. Even without sensation of pain, if you drink a boiling cup of tea or coffee, it will still burn your mouth. This sensation of pain that is there to protect us is called somatic pain. And other than that, there are two other conditions of pain. Psychological pain and neuropathic pain. There are three different types of pain, and these pain may sometimes coexist. Somatic pain, psychological pain, and neuropathic pain, and if you put them all together, <laughs> it may sometimes be quite chaotic, but fortunately, that's not always the case. Well, psychological pain is the type of pain when you go to a doctor complaining about pain, and doctor or dentist, they find nothing wrong with your body. They will start to think, huh, it might be coming from their head. Oh, you have exam next week? That's why you're stressed. Oh, you're not doing well with your husband? Maybe take some time away from him, take a short trip with your friend, and you may feel fine. 
And that's what doctors may actually tell you. However, there is another type of pain, which is called neuropathic pain. And this is the type of pain which I deal with in my normal practice. The problem with neuropathic pain is that it may be completely fine on surface. But this pain is generated due to a dysfunction of nerves or its networks. Normally, when there is a certain amount of stimulation to your body, if it's too much for your body can tolerate, then this is translated into an electrical signal. And this signal is transferred to a brain through a fiber called nerves. And when this signal reaches a certain part of your brain, then it is recognized as pain. Person with neuropathic pain, because of the dysfunction, a regular sensation which shouldn't be painful, like a normal touch or your own body temperature, may feel like you're being stabbed by a sharp needle or feels like a burning sensation. In fact, there is a condition called burning mouth syndrome, which a patient feels a continuous burning sensation out their mouth, and they, link, and they go to a dentist or a doctor and have it examined, and they are told you're completely fine. It is challenging for both us doctors and also for patients, because for us, we have to treat something we cannot see. Because, as I said, this sensation of pain is invisible. And it can be modified and interpreted differently in each individual. So if we can't rely on our eyes, then we have to rely on what patients tell us. And that's why. Because of sometimes stereotypes or misunderstanding may lead the doctor or dentist to say, oh, it's coming from your head although it really is coming from the dysfunction of nerves. For patients, it's hard because this pain they are feeling is real. It really exists, but the doctors don't understand. And not only don't they understand, they start to think or say that it is coming from your head. They start to fear that this pain may be something bad something life-threatening hiding underneath the sensation of pain. They get anxious and they get depressed because there is no sign of hope, of improvement. In fact, there is a survey done back in 1999, sorry, back in 1999, where, which, it was, it's a bit old, and hope there is, there'll be an update on it soon. But a patient with a neuropathic pain or, or facial pain-related disorders, they see more than five different doctors. It takes more than four years until they finally get a proper diagnosis and proper treatment. It's easy if a patient, pa patient complains about pain and an x-ray shows this, a fracture, a broken bone. It can be more obvious. But we have to keep in mind that we are only looking at a broken bone and not the sensation of pain the patient is experiencing. So that's why it can get really challenging for them, for us doctors, if an x-ray shows this, but the patient complains about pain. Oh, it looks completely fine. You're all good. But the patient still feels pain. So what is the definition of pain anyway? A pain nurse, although there is a scientific and more specific definition of pain used today, this is a definition of pain created by a pain nurse. Her name was McCaffrey, and she said, 
Pain is whatever the experiencing person says it is. Existing whenever he or she says it does. Although this was defined almost 50 years ago, almost half a century ago, I think it expresses the essence of pain very well, that it can't be seen, it can't be measured. So when a patient complains about pain, you can't ignore it, you can't neglect it. You have to trust the word and seek for an answer, whether it is somatic, psychological, or neuropathic. I'd like to continue to quote another individual. Her name is Helen Keller. She was challenged with vision and hearing, and this is what she said. The best and most be beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. These days, we tend to focus only on what we can see and not the things we can't see, like feelings or sensations. I hope someday someone will invent a device that can measure pain so everyone can agree on the presence and the amount of pain which a patient is suffering from. I encourage more researchers to explore about the sensation of pain. If you can invent such device, maybe there'll be another Nobel Prize winner from this university. Pain, it is something we can't see, just like smell or taste. So if you see anyone who is suffering from pain, no matter how they seem, don't forget to offer them a helping hand. And to my colleagues, when a patient complains about pain or something wrong with their body, please don't neglect their complaint because to them, it is as real as it can be, even if you can't see. Thank you very much.